Hi, everybody. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to our second uh, episode in a, a year-long series on emerging technologies. Um, you know, I think we all kind of realize that keeping up with uh, all the new stuff is, is pretty hard. I mean, keeping up with the existing stuff is, is hard enough. Um, and so what we have decided to do is help uh, our customers uh, to, to kind of find out what's important to be keeping an eye on. And, and looking at those and finding out how they're applicable to our business. Uh, most of these are very uh, it, close to our comfort zone, um, yet at the same time kind of gets us a little bit outside of that as well. So a lot of cool topics that we've got. Um, you know, last year we talked about, or last week we talked about facial recognition. Uh, today we're going to talk about contact center analytics with Calabrio. Uh, we've got Nutanix. We've got virtualization. We've got... Um, just all kinds of, of emerging technologies. And we're going to do this every single week. Uh, so the beauty is um, the same exact uh, registration that you signed up for for the first one is going to get you into all of them. And we'll uh, be archiving them and, and posting them uh, for, for your review. So if you happen to miss one, uh, we'll, we'll miss you, but, um, but we know you'll get the information. So with that, um, today's topic is, again, about contact center analytics. And um, we've uh, been working with a partner for a few years now that has really, really, really been a, a positive experience. You know, a lot of times when we get into the space, um, there are some partners that are difficult to work with. Um, Calabria is not one of those. Um, they've been an absolute dream. Um, and so we, uh, you know, they had a big presence at uh, the uh, Avaya conference. You know, this past week at IEG Engage, uh, and so it was kind of fun to see them and hang out with them. Um, and so uh, I guess with no further ado, I want to pass this on to our, our host, uh, Charlie Troutwine, who is one of our solution architects. Charlie has been in this industry for a long time uh, and, and has played a lot of different roles from being a customer, being in professional services, to being in pre-sale support. Um, he's kind of covered it. He has seen it all. So with that, Charlie, I want to hand it over to you and uh, thank you for joining us today. And uh, go ahead and take it away, sir. Thanks so much, Dave. Hey, welcome and thanks everybody for joining. Uh, it looks like we've got a fantastic turnout and we really appreciate that. So thanks for joining. A quick um, list of housekeeping comments before we get started. I want to let you know that the session is being recorded. So if you have a colleague who wasn't able to join or a customer who wasn't able to join and you'd like to have them listen in, um, they will be able to access that recording and we'll share that, those details later on. Uh, participants will remain in listen-only mode for the session today. However, you can type any questions that you have online under the question section. If we haven't answered all questions throughout our presentation, we hope to do that, but if we haven't, we will review and answer any additional questions you have toward the end of today's webinar. If we do not respond to your question during the session, you will receive personal follow-up soon after. With that, we would like to begin our presentation. How to succeed with contact center analytics. Clearly, <coughs> excuse me, clearly you will see that the key is to listen to your customers, analyze what is important to them, and understanding how addressing their concerns will enhance your business, often in terms of increased revenue. AeroSI and Calabria One provide solutions to fit your needs and improve your business. You may already be very familiar with Calabria. Many of you already use Calabria One call recording, quality monitoring, workforce management, and some utilize the Calabria advanced reporting. Some of our most successful contact center customers already benefit from what we are here to talk about today, Calabria Analytics. For others, this may be the beginning of your analytics journey. You will come to appreciate the Calabria One approach to analytics combining speech, desktop, and text for true omni-channel analytical capabilities. We will begin with some quick introductions and then we will be on our way. As Dave said, my name is Charlie Trawine. I am a solutions architect with AeroSI and have worked with many of you Sorry, I forgot to advance the slide. There we go. Um, I've worked with many of you for a long time now. If you're less familiar with me, I have been working at AeroSystems Integration for nearly 16 years. And before that, like many of you, I was an end user of contact center technologies. 
In my current role, I am highly focused on evangelizing the Calabrio solutions and helping Aero customers to enhance their contact centers and overall business solutions. Aero has built a very strong partnership with Calabrio over about the past four plus years, and we have countless examples of satisfied customers that were thrilled to know that there is this trusted, tried and true Calabrio option available. Recently, I've been spending considerable time working with my co-presenter, Mary LaFosse from Calabrio. I'm confident that you will enjoy listening to her and the message she delivers, clearly defining analytics and how it satisfies business challenges, demonstrating Calabrio's approach to analytics. I have truly enjoyed getting to know Mary and her most interesting and entertaining customer-focused background. Once Mary introduces herself, she will take us through a portion of our agenda, and then I will cover some customer scenarios to help you see appropriate applications and key benefits your business will obtain from these tools. So just like to change presenters and let Mary be um, our presenting our screens here, and she can go from there and we'll get going. Mary, when you're ready, take it away and thank you. Charlie, thank you so very much for that wonderful, um, entertaining introduction. David, as well, we enjoy the partnership immensely. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. As Charlie said, my name is Mary LaFosse, and I am a contact center speech analyst with Collaborio. I have been here nearly two years this month, as a matter of fact. Uh, prior to that, um, I have nearly 20 years of background in the contact center space within operations. Uh, I'm very passionate about the customer experience um, and driving change as it pertains to the customer's ease of doing business. Um, and I have had the fortune to work with Fortune 100 companies in that, uh, in that endeavor for change management prior to coming here. So with that, I'd like to cover what our agenda will be for our conversation. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what analytics is and how we plan for success within any implementation. What is it we need to know and that we want to find out through the use of analytics that's going to drive change? Then I'm going to give you some ideas and some best practice around implementation keys. And then I want to take it back to uh, Charlie, and he's going to share with you some very uh, poignant customer success stories as they relate to analytics and how some customers really applied the intelligence to realize that return on investment. Of course, we'll talk a little bit more about our partnership as well and go into any questions you might have. So what is analytics? For those of you who may not really know or haven't had the opportunity to be exposed to what analytics is, it really is our tool to open up a world of intelligence to help us better understand the uh, experience of the customer and their ease of doing business uh, with our organization. It's our opportunity to take their feedback and implement change for a much better, well-rounded experience. So why would you care? According to DMG last year, if we look year over year, they anticipate or predict that the market will uh, continue to grow by at least 10% through uh, 2021. And 44% of consumers believe that switching uh, to a competitor will, will follow up um, due to a poor customer service experience. Honestly, I believe that's a little bit low on the numbers because as we know, the more channel churn, the more discord that we create for our experience, for our customers, the more apt they are to defect. Um, and then 66% of contact centers really list that advanced analytics are really part of their key investment, but there's so much more that we need to consider than just investing in, in the technology, not only from a financial aspect, but from a technological aspect and the human capital aspect. Uh, in addition to that, the, the mortar that holds all of those bricks together is change management. 
So the analytics landscape, it's really about a holistic picture of our organization and how your customers are experiencing that. So we are all very familiar with quality management or, or performance management analytics. What we're going to talk about more today is really the speech analytics and desktop analytics. And what I mean by those are speech analytics being your voice of customer and desktop analytics is about your agent efficiency or optimization of your organization. We can begin to look at things like the frequency analytics. As you know, repeat contacts in a contact center, whether it be by telephone, by chat, by web form, are some of your most expensive contacts within the contact center. How do we understand what are the root causes behind a repeat effort? Average handle time analytics, we're talking specifically here about uh, the efficiency of our organization. How have we created some of those internal barriers for our agent success in serving, servicing those customers, such as being able to increase that first call resolution? And tenure analytics, imagine taking the intelligence from your analytics, being able to understand the effectiveness of your training. So when you're bringing on new hires into the organization, how well are they adapting to our training curriculum and using the plethora of systems that they need to navigate in order to effectively service our customers? Now, oftentimes when people hear about analytics, it, they immediately assume we're talking, it's a contact center tool. And while there is, there is great truth in that, it is so much more than that. We have the opportunity to share this intelligence across our entire organization. Uh, there's interest from the financial branch as well as compliance. Compliance is a huge element that we, when we talk about the analytics suite. Um, sales and marketing, what a great opportunity we have to say, we have a marketing campaign that we want to understand the effectiveness of that. And we can measure, really understand if the messaging is resonating with customers. HR executives, it may not be immediately apparent, but HR uh, plays a huge role in understanding the intelligence we're getting from an internal operations perspective, as well as that partnership with compliance, whether that be regulatory, uh, such as you know, PCI and or HIPAA compliance. Not to mention, uh, we don't want to leave IT out, uh, IT often owns, uh, owns the uh, project, if you will, of, of the technology, but we also gain some influence and intelligence uh, by understanding when we have technical, technological um, challenges, either with agents using the technology, or let's say it might even, for example, be a routing issue with the telephone. So here, this depicts the four types of analytics, and this was actually provided by Gartner back in 2016. Now, most organizations, and this is just by nature, we begin where we look backward. We look in the past. What happened? Uh, can we understand? Can we diagnose? But how many are taking action on that? Really, as someone starts down the journey of using analytics, this is where we begin. We look at the path to really create that baseline. What organizations are now moving towards more rapidly and readily, and again, year over year, remember that 10% growth that's being expected, um, we are moving more towards foresight. How do we understand now when we get into diagnostic analytics and even more predictive or prescriptive analytics? How do we move our organizations through that to understand how to prevent those challenges in the first place? So when we talk about analytics, we're talking about not only less about the quantitative uh, relevance of the information we're seeing, but we are talking more about the qualitative. So we're getting that insight and foresight into how to make it a better experience. So why is that valuable? So this slide depicts everything from that business perspective inward, right? We're, we're starting with the business internal operations and we think outward. What's your greatest business concern? What is it costing you, business? 
um, quality inefficiencies or uh, reduced customer satisfaction, missed sales opportunities, here's where I like to start challenging your thinking to be thinking a little bit differently, think outside of the box. As a matter of fact, I would like each and every one of you to think from the outward in. Uh, begin to relate everything that you do from a business perspective, whether it's service, sales, and internal process department, and begin to understand what is the impact to the customer. And when we relate that back to our business process, do we create value by what we're doing? Or are there things that we can discontinue doing uh, that no longer makes sense or are relevant to the customer? So planning for success is huge. Planning for success begins with um, understanding what your pain points are and really having the commitment to building a team for change. So this is a quote, I really love this one, from one of our analytics customers that says, we need to plan to make this work from start to finish, and it's only going to succeed if we have accountability and focus. And again, that's accountability from the perspective of not only resources and financial, but we really have to commit to change. And the great opportunity that analytics provides for us is the ability and opportunity to identify uh, the things that just don't work in the eyes of our customers and saying we are committed to making that change. We hear you and we're going to make it actionable. So being prepared for that change is critical. Building a cross-functional team. And that means engaging everyone at every level of your organization. Do not be afraid to engage your front line because those are the folks that really, they carry the, the load each and every day. They understand what your customers are saying. And they've been telling you for years, I'm sure that they let you know. Now we can validate that story using analytics. Uh, once your organization catches on about this fantastic new tool that we call analytics, they are going to get super, super jazzed. And they're going to come to you with a ton of projects they're going to want to solve. So you want to make sure that you understand where you can commit to ask, sometimes starting with low hanging fruit and building from there. So you really have to understand how you're going to prioritize those projects that are going to come your way fast and furious. Now, while we're focusing on the business, I always want to have you keep in mind Focus on the business, focus on that process, because we know that's what's critical and that's what your C-suite is asking you to deliver to. But always relate it back to how does it impact the customer and does the customer care? Now here it says it's all about the data, but again, I'm gonna go back to, it's less about the quantitative measurement than it is about the qualitative story that that big data is telling us. We need to be able to begin to understand the nuances of the information, deliver that story and say, yes, but is that enough for us to make commitment to change? And again, starting small, go big. Uh, we always want to, as new customers are coming on board, we're gonna start with one small focus, help you realize that win so that you can understand how to build your analytics maturity model from there. And as with anything, follow-up is absolutely critical. So here we have a high-level analytics roadmap of being able to build out that successful analytics process. And it all starts with really baselining, where are we at now? The challenge for most organizations here is understanding or at least being ready to ask some of those difficult questions and hearing the answers. So if you're ready to ask the question, that's half the battle. Hearing the information and being able to remove that to, to neutrality uh, and moving forward to say, yep, that was our window of opportunity. Now we know where we're starting from and we can begin to understand how to drive better processes. Then that commitment to act is how do we get to the end? How do we get to the, the end point that we want to realize and more of that prescriptive uh, customer experience? And how, do we, how are we doing now? Make sure that we're reporting back, visualizing. We call this think, know, act, report, and of course, repeat. Now, underlying all of that, we can't forget, it's 
critical that we have people that are engaged in the, in the processes and the technology, and of course, the change management piece, as always. I will drive that home. So implementation keys. Certainly, we need to have that dedicated team. It starts with having a champion. Who is the individual or individuals who are going to champion for change? They are the ones that are going to be able to ask those difficult questions. They are going to be the ones who can influence decision makers or deliver difficult information um, to open up those doors of opportunity. Who is your mechanic? Now, the champion and the mechanic might be the same people um, because there are, are administrative governance processes that happen with, with the analytics tool. Analytics is not a set it and forget it uh, solution. However, um, if they are different people, there's nothing wrong with that. Again, we're looking for the, the best fit across uh, every level of your organization, every role, every function. And as I said previously, get your teams involved. One of the greatest opportunities is with your QA team. You know, they are in there evaluating calls. They're hearing what the agents say. They have a, a pretty good idea of some opportunities right out of the gate that you might use analytics for, let's say some focused coaching on customer service skills, or maybe focused coaching on sales effect effectiveness. So QA is a great place to start. But as always, your agents and supervisors, they're right on that front line and they know what kind of feedback your customers are giving. As we know, it's extremely important to get that executive sponsorship, get that buy-in. And they might be some of the, the greatest challenge within your organization to help influence the change in understanding the qualitative nuances versus the, just the quality, quantitative um, metrics. And of course, all of the stakeholders understanding who are your recipients or potential recipients across your organization that uh, will have outputs from analytics that will be critical in, in driving change within their internal business process as well. And of course, as I've said, probably on every single slide here, change management is key. So, well, we all know what this stands for, and it's keep it super simple. So we want to define one goal right out of the gate. And this, again, says from the internal business perspective, what keeps you up at night? I challenge you. I hope you have your thinking caps on. And this is about what keeps your customers up at night. What drives your customers to continue doing business with you, or what drives your customers to be a detractor and defect to another competitor? Is the data that you are looking at today that you are measuring, is it actionable? And if not, why are you measuring it? What are you doing with the information that you have at your fingertips today? Do you know what to do with it? A lot of organizations just, just gather the data because that's what we've always done. Well, now we're going to show you how you can take that information and make some sense out of, out of the, the uh, big data to understand what is the voice of customer. And here, one of, one of the best practice tips when you're first starting out is you're going to create your top 10 list against any business issue. There's an art and a science to analytics when we talk about understanding what our business issues are and categorizing those issues so we can report on them. So each of those business issues, we want to know what are those big heavy heater phrases that really drive home the crux of the issue. So once you've actually implemented the software and you've walked through a training process, we continue to evolve that. We assist you in developing that maturity model and your processes. So post-implementation, some keys to remember is you're going to continue to fine tune. You're going to continue to modify and evolve your analytics solution. And that means your library of business issues, categories, and phrases, all of those are going to change. Your visualizations, your reporting, all of that should evolve with not only your business needs, but most importantly, your customers' needs. And this will all help to prove out that ROI for you. Key is you're going to focus on one objective at a time. It's very easy, especially in the beginning, 
to get really excited about analytics. And I, that is absolutely encouraged. But it's very easy for folks to also become analyzed by that, we say, analysis paralysis, as it were. Um, and of course, if you have any questions and you really want assistance in, in how this all comes together, you're going to partner with, with Arrow and Collaborio will assist in any way we can to help you with that through that implementation and developing out that uh, maturity model. So here I just like to talk about this a little bit. Again, I talked just briefly there about uh, analysis paralysis. Uh, oftentimes we look at an issue and say, wow, there's just too much there. I don't know what to do with it. Here it gives just a couple of examples. So the first one being your objective is to reduce handle time by a mere 10%. Some of the measurements we might look at are obviously your average handle time. Perhaps you're going to look at pauses, holds, and transfers, or even silence time. And you're going to look at that uh, within analytics. You're going to look at that with your within the desktop application. And you can marry that with all of your CM, CRM data to understand dispositioning of calls. So very, very high level, we can take a look at each objective and, and debunk the complexity or, or simplify it. Um, the last example being if you wanted to increase sales by a mere 5% and you want to look at phonetic hits in our voice of analytics, then we say thank you for your order, product names, what about cross-selling and upselling um, acumen? Uh, we look at the speech hits and the dispositioning in your CRM and as well as looking at associated calls and perhaps if you end up have an order entry system. So it's very easy to boil the ocean, so to speak. So here we see just a few of the potential return on investment use cases that are probably most common across contact centers today. When using analytics, certainly I will say if, if there are any executives out there that are asking you to reduce operating costs, that's where I want to work. Uh, reduced operating costs um, is probably the most popular uh, use case that organizations want to start with. So we do that by looking at some of those phrases around average handle time. We do that by looking at the appropriateness of where certain call types are being managed. Do we have an opportunity to do a call deflection or a call elimination and take that to a lower cost provider, such as a self-service portal or even a first, first tier support? And we go on to talk about being able to have employee engagement with reducing employee turnover, sales and marketing intelligence I spoke to earlier. Reduced effort is not just customer effort, but also agent effort or even sales effort. Do we understand the uh, lifetime value of our customers? And of course, uh, increased customer satisfaction and retention. Now, with a predictive analytics, we have the ability to take a look at uh, net promoter score and customer um, customer experience scores, if that is what you measure. Um, performance management and focused quality are also uh, another one of the most common use cases that are used today. So here's an example on a reduced call time. This one shows that if we had an average cost of call of 419, um, with the average call length being 275 seconds, a mere 2% of reduction in call time is nearly $200,000 savings per year. And that is significant over time. Um, and imagine exponentially if, if you have the more expensive call, how that's going to uh, reduce that operating cost right off the bat. Decreasing call volume. This is where we talk about that call deflection or perhaps removing that call from a, from a more expensive uh, call tier and, and realizing the return on that. So we're looking for common reasons why people might, um, might call could be addressed within your IVR. It could also be addressed by uh, bulletins on your website. Uh, we're gonna look for multiple calls made by same number and review or discover potential trouble areas. So here we look at a, a reducing those calls by just 5% is going to realize nearly $400,000 per year on that operating cost. Another one, increased revenue. This, again, is in many sales organizations, 
it can be tricky, especially if you've got an organization that is customarily a service organization trying to move towards a sales organization. We know that we may not have, have hired the, the sales skill set in every single seat, and not every single agent is, has the acumen for sales. So how do we enable that? Well, we understand through our voice of analytics, those agents that are successful with sales, sales and service acumen, and we are able to incorporate that into our training. We're able to hear what maybe additional products or services are your customers asking for, and identify language used by sales all-stars or your agents who are really, really exceptional at delivering, uh, delivering the goods and also dealing with um, objections. And here we have the example of increased revenue by 15%. Uh, by customer, you're, you're earning, again, 450000 more per year, remembering customer lifetime value. So how do you create excellent customer experiences? The key is understanding what is the root cause. Have we created the barriers or the bottlenecks? Have we created opportunities for our customers in, in, to uh, experience channel churn? They're out on our website, they can't find the information because the link is buried, and now they're picking up the phone. Uh, we know that customers don't appreciate having to have that repeat effort, and the more they repeat, uh, the more likely they are to go to a competitor. Now, just identifying the root cause and the effect of customer sentiments that we receive is, is the beginning, it's, it's a start. Uh, we need, again, to be able and committed to taking action or change uh, to improve that satisfaction and retention. So with that, um, a lot of information to digest, and I could talk about analytics all day, but I really want us to get to the meat of it. Charlie is going to share with you now some great customer success stories. And I'd like to go ahead and turn this over to him and take it away, Charlie. Thank you, Mary. Hopefully you're seeing my screen. Well, let me make sure that you're seeing my screen. There we go. Um, customer success stories here. So uh, first of all, I wanted to say I am really enjoyed these Collaborio analytics success stories. They um, help me hearing the stories from the customer's perspectives really drive the value of the solution to an extreme level of excitement. I kept thinking of scenarios where having these tools in place would have helped some very specific challenges from my own past employment events, and also the problems it could solve for many of my business customers, many of you. These customer success stories highlight a variety of key analytical benefits. Keep in mind these customers can and do often utilize a combination of speech, desktop, and text analytics. You're going to see how Collaborio One truly provides the very real, usable data to give clear insight that is actionable in any contact center environment. As I go through these examples, I want you to think about how you could personalize this for your organization. You may likely be working in an industry that may be very different than the examples that I use, but the features and the data available can easily, easily be applied to your business. If you want to speak to me in greater detail after today's session, we can have an offline conversation and dig, in, dig deeper into your specific situation and what it might take to implement Collaborio Analytics in your environment to provide the similar and potentially even greater benefits in your own organization from what we're going to see here today. So our first case is a popular coffee retailer that was faced with a challenge dealing with customer retention. Management knew they had a problem, but only with Collaborio Analytics tool could they pinpoint the issue. As it turns out, there were many customer complaints, often dealing with an incorrect coupon being offered or frustration that no shipping discounts were applied. Through the power of the available tools, management sifted through the context and pinpointed the problems. They reviewed the context that related to complaints, coupons, free shipping, et cetera, and determined that the correct coupons were not being offered at the right times. To fix the problems, management gave the agents the factual details and 
provided the agents with more options to offer a coupon that would satisfy the end customers. With the agents having an awareness of the problem and a means of satisfying the complaint, the situation was rectified and they were able to retain more of their customers. As further corrective action, agents received additional training to limit or altogether avoid future such instances. It wasn't a matter of simply giving customers a discount. It is protecting the company's interests. The better prepared the agents are, the more likely the interactions will be mutually satisfactory. Agents are empowered to work with the customers and better determine if a small discount would appease a customer's complaint. Customers perceive they are cared for and offer deals, yet the business isn't losing profits unnecessarily. The story of our appliance dealer may resonate with many of you. I like this example because it's easy to apply this challenge of dealing with inexplicable high volumes of contacts in most contact centers. This is a challenge that so many of us have been, and likely will again, be faced with trying to explain and overcome. Detailed review was necessary to determine if the large increase of calls were new callers or repeat callers. As you likely know, and as Mary already pointed out earlier, repeat callers is an expensive transaction and should be avoided whenever possible. Therefore, we often concentrate on first call resolution because it is more cost effective. This retailer reviewed their contact records to isolate the customer pain points and began to get a handle on the issue. Yes, that was punny because as it turned out, the culprit was faulty hardware. A handle on a particular model of refrigerator kept breaking. Once identified, the contact center was able to first share that knowledge with the refrigerator manufacturer who quickly redesigned the handle and shipped the new handle to the purchasers. The handle repair was not only presented to the customers that already complained, but proactively to all consumers that purchased the refrigerator within the time of the manufactured faulty handle. Of course, the contact center agents were informed of the issue and could address the related calls more efficiently upon the first contact because there was an awareness of the issue and an established procedure to ensure a replacement handle had been ordered or could be delivered quickly. This action was a customer satisfier, but also protected the business and drastically improved operating costs, limiting returns and repairs. Here, we have an insurance example. Please note, this issue relates to a change in policy and how the customers could pay their bills. This insurance business was confronted with a decision to try and remove the option of permitting customers to pay by credit card. As you are aware, credit card transactions are costly, but the insurance company did not want to remove this costly option if it was going to have a negative impact or cause customer perception issues. As management prepared to enact the payment policy change, they commissioned a full review of 100% of customer interactions to determine customer reactions to the proposal to eliminate credit card payment options. Fortunately, they discovered that most customers were content with this change. Management was further able to determine that they did not require a lengthy retention campaign to help customers coping with this payment option change. This insurance company validated their business decision to discontinue the expensive policy of accepting credit card payments with minimal repercussions. They were able to maintain their industry-leading retention rate of 92% and experience a large reduction in costs amounting to $10 million in savings per year by removing the credit card payment option. Interestingly, 
a mere 0.03% of the customers indicated their strong displeasure with the policy change. This small risk exposure was in the very acceptable range and chalked up to the cost of doing business. You cannot always please 100% of the customers. This time, they were fairly close. Now, a quick story how a wireless retailer used Calabrio Analytics to reduce the high number of escalated calls. This retailer started out with a very common problem. They had a ton of escalated calls and wanted to understand why. They started by looking at calls using a very common phrase, speak to a supervisor. I bet you've heard that before. So they began drilling down from there. They were able to pinpoint the exact and widespread cause of customer frustration. Customers had received emails alerting them that their phones were ready to be picked up in a retail store. The customers would go to the store, pick up their phones, but then would receive subsequent messages again asking them to pick up their phones. Customers were confused and annoyed. Why were they getting these emails? It turned out that the store managers were not closing out the orders following the pickup, causing the system to automatically send reminder emails and continue to push, excuse me, pester customers for no reason. After learning this, the company updated their training to ensure all store employees knew how and when to properly close out orders. And then they saw a 13% reduction in their escalated calls. Because agents no longer had to spend time on this type of call, they also saved a whopping $400,000 in operational expenses due to the decrease in call volume. So let's review another example. In accordance with the Fairness to Contact Lens Consumer Act, contact lens retailers must verify contact lens prescriptions with eye care providers before shipping the lenses to the consumers. A contact lens retailer was struggling to track its compliance with this regulation. With no means to automate the categorization of interactions into those that result in a verified prescription and those that did not, the contact lens retailer retained several employees to do nothing but listen to calls to confirm that proper efforts were made to verify prescriptions. In addition, to costly fines, a lengthy prescription verification process meant that the lenses took longer to reach the consumers. This increased the number of calls to the contact center as customers inquired about their orders. It also put them at risk of increased customer attrition as customers were driven to order from their eye care provider or a competitor. With analytics of speech, text, and desktop, the contact lens retailer was able to analyze thousands of interactions to pinpoint phrases related to prescription verification, like, this is a prescription verification request, or verification message is now complete, which helped to manage risk, streamline the verification process, and reduce time to shipment. The contact lens retailer was at risk of costly fines if a prescription was delivered without the appropriate effort to verify it. Up to $11,000 per infraction. With over 11 million orders fulfilled each year, if just 1% of those orders were fulfilled without a properly verified prescription, the retailer was at risk of losing up to $1.2 billion dollars per year in fines. So, they effectively prevented up to 1.2 billion per year in fines, and they were also able to reallocate human resources to solving more critical problems, uh, more business problems, that, um, and fulfill their brand promise by speeding up the delivery to the consumers. Just a quick review of a few more customer examples. This one 
was a luxury jeweler looking at a marketing challenge. They were not sure they had an actual pending problem or not related to a printed ad that was released to the public, but they had some minor reason of concern, so they wanted to poll the customer base. During random monitoring of phone calls, a supervisor identified one customer complaining about the printed ad and took the concern to management. Not knowing if this was widespread, they determined the best way to accomplish this was to review 100% of their contacts to evaluate the print ad feedback. After analyzing over 100,000 emails and 350,000 phone conversations, and found all advertising related conversations, it revealed that fortunately, they located only three calls in a two week time period where the callers mentioned the ad in a negative context. Therefore, the jeweler was able to continue with the ad campaign, resulting in enhanced revenue, avoiding any retractions of the publication, and ultimately amounted to opening up a new market with buying power approaching a billion dollars. Sometimes the challenge is a matter of sentiment, and it's important for service industries to pay attention to such matters. For instance, a specialty retailer needed customer feedback on gift packaging. For instance, <clears throat> um, they, they had a customer experience team looking in and evaluating speech and text analytics for an internal calls and website survey feedback to determine the value and the importance of including packaging for all company orders. The results determined some major changes to enhance favorable customer sentiment. In addition to quality adjustments, future orders were to include a gift bag for all online purchases. This resulted in a reduction in customer calls and a reduction in negative comments regarding the sales experience. And finally, a clothing retailer that was challenged with escalations, but they could not determine the cause. There was a huge sample size as it required looking at a thousand locations and 13,000 employees' interactions. Collaborio Analytics enabled 100% sample review of this population to determine the agents needed further training on call control and managing difficult conversations. With targeted training, the agents were better prepared to handle the escalation type conversations, resulting in a large decrease in calls that required supervisor intervention. Whether your contact center challenges involve concerns of customer retention, high call volume, policy changes that impact the contact center, um, resolving matters on the first customer contact, escalation calls, compliance requirements, marketing feedback, customer experience, or another challenge that needs scrutiny, analytics is your answer. In each of these customer examples, Collabrio Analytics delivered the powerful insights that the company needed to make better, faster decisions in order to protect their business and gain more contact center efficiency. These same capabilities await you. Mary, as I hand back over to you, uh, since I approach these customer cases from the perspective of helping Aero customers to see the value that they could gain, I may have missed some of the individual components of some of the customer stories. Did you have any additional comments or contribution to the customer examples that I reviewed? Charlie, I think you did an outstanding job representing those uh, customer successes. And what I'd love is if you could share a little bit more about the services that we provide to ensure customer success for Aero customers. I'm sorry, Mary, right. you're going to cover that or would you want me to? Well, again, we wanted to talk here about the, the different services that are, that are offered um, with Arrow's managed services and, and Collabrio's partnership there. 
um, and how we ensure the uh, success of each and every implementation for customers. So for the customer lifetime value um, for software, we are here in, in an advisory capacity all the way through to maintenance and maturity. So uh, again, we have many service offerings to ensure the success of each and every customer. And Air Charlie, did you have anything services. to add? Yeah, I was just going to say that Arrows Managed Services ties right in with Calabria's Innovation Center to ensure that you know our customers are are covered completely and they have an easy access to support um, to, to carry them right through the analytics. Um, you know, as they're as they're implementing, as they're building it, as they're fine tuning it and working with it, they've got they've got complete coverage. So I think that's great. About Thanks, what I would like. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah, I think with that, you know, we just have a little bit more or less, and we want to go ahead and get to questions. But on the next slide, if if you would, um, Charlie, the uh, just a couple of highlights about wanted to share with you about who Collaborio is. Um, you know, we are headquartered here in Minneapolis, but we have offices across North America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. Uh, we are actually um, listed as a leader in both Gartner and Forrester, the Gartner's Magic Quadrant and Forrester Wave. Uh, with nearly 400 employees worldwide, 166 global partners, and of course, we are ecstatic that uh, Aero is one of our esteemed partners as well. So, with that, I want to turn it back to Charlie. Again, thank you everyone for your time and attention, and I hope you have a lot of questions. Thank you, Mary. I'm going to look to review some of the questions here and see if the, some of these make the most sense to try to cover here. So give me a second. Um, right. Sorry, it's a little small print, so I'm trying to make sure that I've got this. Okay. So the the one question I see here is, do you know how long does it take to implement this solution? So in, in implementing um, Collaborio Analytics is that is that a a quick process? Is that um, do you have any comment on that, Mary? Yeah, it you know it it all depends. It's certainly customer specific. Uh, we, we are certainly um, leaders in in I would say deployment, um, and a lot will depend on whether it's a cloud solution, an on-prem solution, or a hybrid approach. And we'd be more than happy to uh, address some specifics with individuals on that if they have uh, some uh, timeframes in mind. Perfect, thank you. Uh, another question is asking, does Collaborio Analytics work in environments that do not use Collaborio recording? Collaborio Analytics does need to have uh, the Collaborio recording solution. Okay. And a final uh, question that I'm seeing here Oh, hold on a minute. I think we've answered that. Okay. Um, when you run an analytics review of the tens of thousands of records, is that service affecting? Uh, does the review run off hours? The review, or we'll say the task is what we call it, uh, can run either um, hourly or can run daily, and, and many customers will run them after business hours. So typically a 2 a.m. Uh, maintenance window. Perfect. Thank you. you Mary, I believe that was all the questions and actually um, good timing because it only leaves us a few more minutes to to cover um, our closing remarks. I guess before I go on, Mary, was there anything else that you wanted to add for today's session? No, I, I think it's been um, a, a great conversation. And uh, again, thank you for the opportunity. We look forward to uh, engaging with you in the future. Thanks for your help, Mary. So again, I wanted to, with that, just thank everybody for joining today's session. Um, wanted to um, show you this slide here just to remind you that if you do want to have an offline conversation, my contact information is there, Charlie Troutline, Arrow, and my phone number. You also can contact your Arrow SI account executive directly. Of course, we can work together and we can have additional conversation to dig in deeper on the Collaborio Analytics. Thank you so much for listening today and paying attention to our, uh, our stories. 
And hopefully you were able to glean some information from there to help apply to your own business. And we look forward to those additional conversations. So I wanted to also mention, as Dave mentioned in the very beginning, this is a series of a webinar series that we have our Solutions Architects presenting on. Uh, next week, we have Remote Monitoring Management with uh, Mr. Rob Yowsey. He'll be here presenting and, and taking you through that topic. And then the following week, February 15th, we have no webinar. We have a, our sales conferences that week, so we are not going to be presenting. But we'll be back on track on February 22nd and moving forward from there. And you can get a quick glimpse at the um, planned agenda or the um, list of the upcoming webinars. So with that, thank you very much. And I appreciate you joining and have a great day.